What's up everyone? Just wanted to make a quick video today showing off some recent pickups. Um, the last non-break video I did, I think was like November or December. So I've picked up quite a few things since then. Uh, these are just some of my favorites. So let's get into the video. All right, so let's start off with some top loaded cards. Uh, all right, so here we have a 2021 Top Series 1 Yankees team card printing plate, one of one. Uh, this is the magenta printing plate. That's a cool one. I also have the 2021 Series 1 uh, LeMayhew printing plate. This is also, I believe, the magenta. I picked these up from different places, but that's kind of cool that they're the same type of plate. I also have these three Ty Buttry cards. He is one of my main players that I collect that I've picked up recently. So this is his yellow printing plate. The sticker's on the outside of the top loader. I just do that for organizational purposes, but uh, these three Buttries were pretty, pretty nice to add to my collection. This is his one of one uh, printing plate of his Topps Chrome Rookie Auto. And this is the red refractor of his Topps Chrome Rookie Auto. So this one's out of five. This one's a one of one. Um, all I need, I have every other parallel of this card. Uh, all I need is the Super Fractor, and I know who has it. Um, I was actually sent it by Ty Butcher himself. He, somebody reached out to him saying that they had the card, and then I've been trying to negotiate something with that person, but to no avail so far. So I will continue to work on that, but for, so for now, these were two great additions to the Rainbow. I also have this 2020... Tops um, on demand mini butt tree. Uh, this is a one of one. It's the platinum. So that was a cool little pickup. All right, so that's it for stuff on the top loaders. Let's get into some SGC slabs. So, first, this was a nice pickup from an eBay auction. It's a 1962 Tops Whitey Ford SGC Authentic because there is a beautiful blue pen autograph on this card so i had been looking for a ford auto for a while um and this one came up and i really liked the look of the card obviously liked that it's autographed so was really happy to pick this one up and i think i got a great price on it as well now uh this was a card that i've been looking for for a really long time uh i've been looking to pick up a nice high grade willie maze from the late 50s early 60s for a few months this one surfaced um, and I bought it as soon as I saw it. Didn't bother making an offer because it was already priced really well. Uh, this 1961 Willie Mays in an SGC 7 or 84 near mint. Um, definitely think Mays is undervalued right now. And as soon as he, well, I don't know how old he is, but I think he's in his 90s. So unfortunately, he does not have much longer. And once he passes, his cards will be pretty much unattainable i think so this is definitely a card that will never leave my collection really happy to add this nice uh example of a 61 tops card of one of the all-time greats so that's that now the next four cards are cards that i've had for a few years at least um but i actually sent them to get graded at sgc um so i sent these after sgc raised their prices the first time so the prices used to be $15 per card. Then they raised them um, because they added more graders, so their turnaround times were better. But to, to pay the salaries of these new graders, I guess they had to raise the prices. So I got these in at $25 a card, and the turnaround time was two weeks. That's it. So pretty insane turnaround time on these. Like I sent them early March, got grades like 10 days after I sent them in, and then they were back in hand within two weeks. So... Now, that was all great, but unfortunately, they kind of killed me on these grades. So we're going to start off with this Hank Aaron, 58 Hank Aaron. This card looks like at least a 5 at first glance, but it does have a small crease in this bottom right corner, which I thought would knock it down to a 4. It got a 3. It's not that great centering, so not the worst. Yeah, on the back, it's pretty bad, but I thought this was a 4. got a 3, so that's oh well. This card... Uh, oh, and by the way, this I got this from Truth Seeker Jason. I haven't seen him in a while, but he is such a generous person. He I got this for free in one of Eric Jabs' live streams a long time ago. 
One of my favorite cards right now. Uh, this one, this card um, had been just in my family for a long time. It was like one of the only <laughs> cards that uh, older family members had kept from when they were kids. I don't know why this one happened to be the only one because they had some pretty cool cards back in the day, but this was the only one that is still in the family. So I wanted to get this graded. Um, I was expecting a three on this one, to be honest, because it has this visible crease top left. Uh, I don't know if it goes through. I don't think it goes through to the back, but it's pretty obvious because it's on a black border right there. So I thought this was going to get a three. It got a four, so obviously I'm happy that it got higher than I was expecting, but I'd rather get the four on the Aaron and the three on this. I wish I could flip-flop these two, but it's whatever. Uh, let's do this one first. This one... This I won from BITG Breaks on New Year's Eve, I think it was, a couple years ago. Or maybe it was just over a year ago, I don't remember. It's either a year or two years ago. Um, but this card got a 1.5 because it has some serious creasing going on in the middle. And I was expecting either a 1 or a 2 on this. Um, but it has, like, the best centering I have ever seen on a 68 mantle. I mean, it is dead centered. Left, right, top, bottom... If you just look at this card from afar and you can't see the creases, put that in the frame. This card has pretty much the best eye appeal I've ever seen on one of these. Back is the same thing. Dead centered, no paper loss, no marks, no nothing, just those creases. So if, if this card didn't have those creases and had the centering and had sharp corners, this is a PSA 10 right here. But obviously it's not a PSA 10, it's a PSA 1.5. Now this last... Uh, one was the one that I was the most disappointed about. I mean, the sub was okay overall. I don't know what they were thinking with this card. Uh, this card is crease-free. The corners are sharp enough. The edges are a little bit jagged, but that is not a condition issue. That is just how some 61 Tops cards were printed. And it got a 2.5. And, it, and it, this card is pretty well centered for 61. I have no idea what they were thinking with this. The back is clean. The front, the surface is extremely clean on this card. I know some of them have, like, scuffing over here. This one does not. No creases, as I said. Decent centering. Corners are good enough to be a four. And the edge thing is not a defect. That's just how these were printed and cut. I was expecting a four on this. I would have been upset with a three. And then I got a 2.5. So I'm not sure about that. Uh, and I would resubmit this, except for the fact that SGC just raised their lowest grading fee to $75 per card. Now, when they did that yesterday, April 1st, we all thought it was an April Fool's joke, because who does SGC think they are doing that? I mean, no, like, we, like, SGC cards have, like, aside from vintage, they have, like, there's no reason to grade a modern card with SGC, in my opinion. There's no resale value there whatsoever. So, for them... It was already pushing it a little bit to make their lowest price 25 a card and then 75 a card. I'm not sure who thought that was a good idea. So this one will be staying in this 2.5 slab, unfortunately, because it deserves a 3 or a 4. But it will stay locked up as a 2.5. I mean, I'm not never going to sell any of these anyway, so it doesn't really matter, but it's still a little bit annoying. Next are these two. These are two pretty special cards right here. Let me start off with this one. This is a 2006 Topps Aflac DJ LeMayhew All-American Autograph. Now, what this card is, was a promotional card from a high school tournament that LeMayhew was a part of. Freddie Freeman and Madison Bumgarner were also a part of it. But they made these cards, and the, the tournament was sponsored by Aflac. So they made these promotional cards um, for the players to... And then, so they... The cards were made, they were like distributed at the event, and then the leftovers were turned, were used as buyback cards and were autographed by the players and inserted into 2009 Bowman draft packs, which are the same packs that can have Mike Trout's first Bowman autograph. So these were, th this is a, an extremely rare card. LeMay uses one of the only numbered ones because there's less of them for some reason than Freddie Freeman's. So Freddie Freeman's is not, is not numbered, but this one... 120 of 142. So the story about this card is that I found it on eBay raw a few months ago, saw the auction. Uh, these typically, typically go for a few hundred dollars, and I ended up winning this for less than a hundred dollars. I have no idea how. I was the only bidder on it. The starting bid was under a hundred, and I was the only bidder. This is an insanely rare 
LeMayhew piece, um, one of LeMayhew's best autographs in existence. And what makes this card even cooler is the fact that the autograph got a 10. I sent this in for grading. The autograph got a 10. And the reason that's cool is because this is the only one in existence out of the 142 with a 10 autograph. And the reason is that nobody gets the autograph graded on these because LeMayhew must have done something when he was signing them. And the autograph on every single other one that I've seen sell, and I've seen a few dozen sell, is blotchy or smudged. This is the only one of this card in existence with a clean autograph, which is why I opted for the dual grading. So PSA would give it that 10 autograph, uh, which significantly boosts the value of this card. Now, that near mint 7 I'm not too happy about, and I talked with the third-party service that I graded with this, and they could not figure out why this got a 7. I was honestly expecting at least a 9. This card is sharp. The corners are insanely sharp. The surface is clean. And it's extremely clean because this autograph is not messed up. Uh, but just aside from that, the surface has no scuffs or anything. It's obviously crease-free. Centered well enough. I mean, left to right's not perfect. Edges are good. So I have no idea what they were thinking with this 7. The only thing I can think of is this hologram sticker on the back. It's like covering words, and it's a little bit slanted, but they're all like that. And there's only one PSA 10 of this in existence, but I've seen it, and the autograph is blotchy and smudged. So I appeal wise, this is the best out of 142 of these in existence. So pretty cool LeMayhew piece right here. Now the next LeMayhew is also quite a cool piece. It is a 2011 Topps update LeMayhew Black Parallel PSA 9 Mint. Population 2. This card is a Population 1. Now, this is one of LeMayhew's rarest rookies. Uh, it's the Black Parallel, numbered out of 60. Um, I had been looking for this card for so many months. It had actually been over a year, I believe. So, a year ago, one of these surfaced, I believe, uh, sold for like $80. And it was ungraded. And I was so upset because it looked really clean, and I just forgot to bid. And there were no PSA 9s in the report at that time. No 10s either. They're none higher than this still in the pop report. So I was extremely mad about that. And then a few months passed, the PSA 8 comes up and sells for like five times what the raw one did because LeMahieu was getting really hot. Another PSA 8 sells for like four times. And then they, they cooled down a little bit and 8 sold for like three times what the raw originally sold for. Finally, I was just... And then, and then a raw comes up a couple months ago. And I'm so excited. It's an auction. And for some reason, the auction was ending at like 4 a.m. But I'm like, you know what? I need this card. I need this card. So I wake up at 4 a.m. on a Sunday to bid on this card. And I got outbid. And I could not believe it. I was so upset. But that triggered me to Google this card. I'm like, you know what? Let me just see if anybody on a different site has one. So sure enough, I Google it. And a link comes up to Reddit. I click on the Reddit link. And I see this. And the caption is pop2, whatever. I flip over. I flip like to the next picture. The serial number is 31 of 60 which is the exact serial number that that original raw one had sold for a year prior that got me hooked on this card. So the winner, the winning bidder of that card that got it for like $80, got it graded, posted on Reddit. I was able to get a hold of them. We messaged back and forth. Uh, his, his name is Justin. He was extremely nice. We worked out a great deal, and I am so happy to add this to my collection. Cannot believe that this is the exact card that a year ago I missed out on and was like the number one card I was hunting for months and months and months. And it also happens to be 31 of 60 and 31 of Ty Buttrey's jersey number. So this one is definitely not leaving the collection. I've never worked so hard for a card as I did with this one. And I'm just ecstatic to have this in my collection. Next, uh, we have two Tim Andersons. Uh, this one is his first Bowman autograph on the right, a BGS 910. And then on the left, we have a PSA 9 gold refractor auto from Topps Finest. Um, picked both of these up for relatively cheap. The one on the right, this is 0.5 from being a true gem, a min gem. So pretty great subs for a nine. Um, and I, same, Anderson and LeMayhew are two players that I just think are criminally undervalued. So I was happy to add these two Andersons to my collection before the season started. Next, we have uh, this 1957 Tops Mickey Mantle and Yogi Berra card, both of them. It's just a great photo, um, just, a, just a cool card, honestly. I mean, it's not one that I see too often, but just a cool card. A pretty decent grade on this one, uh, but I don't know. I just saw this 
on eBay. I picked it up for like half the price of a PSA 3. So it's a Beckett holder I know, which isn't ideal for vintage, but just really happy to get this one. It's just two of my favorite Yankees on one card. You can't really beat that. Next uh, is a Casey Mize first Bowman Chrome autograph. This card um, I got for a pretty good deal. Um, I <laughs> Mize hasn't been playing too great, which is unfortunate. Um, but hopefully he can turn it around and this card will be worth a good bit. Next is two of these. Uh, I picked up two of these because I like the card so much. They are uh, 2020 Topps Archives uh, Cornfield Edition autographs. But the thing is, these aren't the regular Cornfield. These are both the pinstripe variation. You can see that along the side there. They're both pinstripe variation. One is 1 of 27. The other is 11 of 27. So these are both extremely short printed. Um... They are like two of the only ones I've seen sell on eBay, and I scoop both of them up for a great price. Uh, so definitely happy to have these two LeMayus. Now we got a few more LeMayus here, and then there's one other card I need to grab. But uh, so here are a few more LeMayu autographs. The first one is a red ink from Heritage, 2020 Heritage high number. Red ink out of 71. Picked this up from a seller in Canada. Took a little while to get here, but it was worth it. Love this card. Love these Heritage autographs on the retro design now here are two one of one uh, archive signature LeMahieu autographs that I picked up the one on the right is from 2016 tops holiday one on the left is 2017 tops and it's a rainbow foil they're both one of one um I got both of them for really good prices uh this one's 20 the one on the left is 2020 archives the one on the right is 2021 you can tell by the different stickers over the one touches but yeah two super cool Mayhews I added to the collection and then one more card a pretty big one at that this last card added up to the side here a 1953 tops satchel page PSA 4 this card was a massive pickup for me um I had been looking for one of these for an insanely long time uh I was trying to find one on eBay that wasn't working because all the shill bidding with the different consignment sellers that just have their cards go for way more than they're worth. So I was just having a really time, hard time finding one. And the longer I waited, the more expensive these became. Uh, when I first started looking, PSA 4s were 500. Then they went up to like two grand at one point. I was able to secure this one on Heritage Auctions, a different site, through their make an offer to buyer feature, which is basically, so this card sold through auction on Heritage Auctions website in 2018. And there's a feature on their website where if you make an account, get approved, you can make an offer to the person who bought that card, even if it's not actively for sale. So that's what I did. Made an offer on this one and the, the owner of the card made a slightly higher counter offer. I didn't waste time, I just accepted. And here it is. Not the best centering, top to bottom is pretty good. Left to right could be better. But the color is outstanding on this card. And there's no like blemishes or surface imperfections or anything. Just a wonderful card of one of the best pictures of all time. Definitely not leaving the collection anytime soon. So yeah, guys, that is uh, what I've been up to for the past few months in terms of pickups. Um, I'll always look into add more Ty Buttry cards, more high-end vintage, more LeMayhew. So yeah, guys, thank you for watching and have a good one.